Hi, welcome to another video. So I've just purchased this 16 position rotary encoder from Microelectronica. This particular model has the yellow LEDs. I believe there's red, green and blue. I'll stick this pen lid on to give you a demonstration. So first of all, if you press the encoder, there's four different settings. So that's one, two, three, and then four. As I say, it's 16 position. Hopefully you get the idea. So if I press That's back to the default. As you can see, I've got the rotary encoder plugged into my EasyPick Fusion version 7. Comes with that TFT 32 bit microcontroller. In case you're wondering what these wires are, there was an Ethernet transceiver down there. I've removed it. I wanted the available pins to come out on the board. So the demonstration program just sends the SPI from this to the rotary encoder and gets these LEDs to rotate. As you rotate the rotary encoder, the LEDs count up in a binary fashion. As you turn the rotary click clockwise, it counts up binary. You can see 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. All I'm doing here is drawing a rectangle in the wire 1 and updating the lead state. And that's the maximum for an int in the position one. So that's 16 clicks. One more click, back to position one. So I've now pressed the button. So we've got two LEDs on. Right, we've got a decimal reading of 257. And then now just eight clicks before it reaches the maximum and rolls over to one. 32,000 and then back to 257. Press the encoder again so we've got four LEDs lit. We've got a decimal value 4369. Well, that's one click, two, three, and back to the beginning again. So, as I say, this is just a simple demonstration program giving you a guide how to use the rotary encoder and I'm just displaying the lead status in this corner. Well, what I've done, wired the lead status to the PWN2 on this microcontroller, which is RD1 down here. And I've now got this 10 volt LED wired up uh, via a FET and this PWM controlled by the lead status is now driving that FET, controlling this LED. So if I give you a quick example without trying to cover the LEDs. So the first few steps don't really increase the PWM enough to see anything on here. So up to is it position 5 clicks we can now see some light. But yeah, this could be a fan, motor control or something like that. It's just these LEDs need a fair bit of power to start illuminating. 64, 128, 1024, 2048, 4096, 8192. Don't know if we saw, well, I think they're nearly at full brightness, so we're not seeing much of a difference with the PWM. That's 16,000, and then 32,000, which is half the int. So it's now going to roll back over again. So that's a simple demonstration using their demonstration software controlling the PWM. So if I press the buttons at position one, two, three, four. Right, download Microelectronica's sample software. You'll find it Libstock Community. So here I've added the TFT. This is the touch panel 
and I've moved the analog digital from the main to here and disabling the JTAG, initializing the TFT. This is microelectronicas. This, this is the rotary encoder or the rotary clickboard. This is what I was talking about. The lead state is an int, so it's going to roll over at 65,000. This is the string, so I can display the lead state on the TFT. This is microelectronicas, the A, B bit for the encoder, and the increment button when you press the button. This is writing the values to the device. You can see they're using SPI3. So this is the main. So when you turn the unit on, defaults to LED1. This is initializing the touch panel above. You can see this is all to do with the rotary encoder and the SPI3 in it. You can see I'm filling the TFT blue, setting the brush, small bit of text, and then the microelectronica logo. And this is where I'm in initializing the PWM2. And this is the wild one already. So it's a very short program. So because this rotary encoder, the rotary click, works in the wild one, it's important not to have too much of a delay. Otherwise, the program is not going to see the rotary encoder turn. Right, you previously saw the LEDs counting up in binary format, which is this bit here and this bit here. What I've done, removed those statements. And we've now got lead state is plus one and lead state minus one. So as we turn the knob, it's going to count up in ones and or decrease in ones. Although the LEDs are still going to show the sum in a binary counting format. So you can see this is the increase button. These are the four cases for when you press the button. And you see one LED there, two there, four there, and that decimal number or hexadecimal 5555 five, five, five gives you eight LEDs on. And then the final part, Microelectronica would just simply update the rotary and go to here. And I'm just converting that to a string to display it on the TFT, drawing the rectangle in the wild one so that we can display the string writing the string there and here setting the PWM duty to the lead state on PWM2. Right so I'll show you on the screen first that's now counting in ones and because it's an int it's going to count up to 65,535 before it rolls over. You've got to turn that hundreds of times before it's going to roll over but you can obviously change the program get it to do what you want. So that's obviously counting up and down in ones. You can get it tens, twenties, hundreds, thousands, whatever you want. So these LEDs are now going to count in binary but in increments of one. So if I press this quick way of resetting it, you can still jump up pressing this button you can obviously change that program if you want as well. So one, two, three, four, five, so we, look we've got two LEDs on so that would be a one and a two. And that's obviously a four. And plus a one is five. But now so we're going up in ones. So obviously the pattern on here changes and you can just see the LED starting to come on faintly at decimal 20. That's now 26. But so it's a small amount to start to see them to come on but now you need a large amount to make them brighter. So maybe I'll go to two clicks. As you go to two clicks, I forgot it's still counting in ones. We're up at 328. Oh, 
I, I think I clicked, clicked it. It went to four. So uh, on the TFT, we're on four thousand three hundred and seventy-four. So you can see four thousand three hundred. So what of sixteen turns or sixteen? One turn gives you sixteen clicks. So obviously, to get up to four thousand to make this LED bright, you've got to turn this rotary knob many times. So maybe one increment per click isn't enough but all depends on what you want to do, how sensitive you want it. So that's a brief look at Microelectronica's rotary encoder. An sample software gives you a building block. Once you've mastered that, you can incorporate rotary encoders into other pieces of software. Hopefully you found this helpful. Hi, so you nearly forgot, while you're at microe.com, looking through their hundreds of click boards, development boards, software, if you're a Microelectronica fan as I am, you can pick up the t-shirt, as I did. Thank you for watching.